Love this podcast? Support this show through the Acast Supporter feature. It's up to you how much you give and there's no regular commitment. Just hit the link in the show description to support now. The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Coming to you from underneath a peach blossom It's time for an episode of Be Awesome Find positivity throughout your life and work Just like our mascot rooster, Steve the Jerk Hello and welcome to another episode, episode 120 of the Be Awesome podcast, magic number 120. This is the first one in probably 20 or more episodes that I don't have my partner, co-host Mark Resnick with me. He's uh, with his family. Uh, He's got a child graduating high school, so congratulations on that. I am flying solo in the studio with my Friend here, Adam, in the ECAT studio, as always, Adam, thank you for all that you do to make us sound good and look good for this uh, wonderful podcast. This episode is, as always, uh, they're all interesting. Uh, This one came about because I did a keynote in Columbus, Ohio last month, and it was uh, was a life experience one for me because it's actually... Uh, Columbus, Ohio was was the audience in uh, 2016, 2017 that I saw a guy by the name of Sam Glenn, who's been on the podcast. I saw him speak and I said, I can do this. And it was a, a long way to get to that stage. Uh, I got there. It was emotional. There was 1,100 people, with record attendance. I got done. I was selling T-shirts afterwards. And this woman walks up to me and I don't even know what she said. She just started talking and she was just loaded with energy. And she's like, I would be honored if... I could be on your podcast with my partner, Jamie, and talk about the importance of health and wellness, uh, specifically for older people. And, uh, and I said, well, I'm one of those older people. I want to learn some stuff. And, and, and here we are. So first and foremost, that person being Carol Lake, uh, Carol, welcome to the podcast. Hi there. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, no, we're excited to have you. Thank you for making the time. And then her partner, which this was the funny part, we were talking for a while, and she says, hey, have you ever seen 8-Minute Abs? And I was like, who hasn't? Uh, she's like, he's he's the 8-Minute Ab guy. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. So this this is the real-life creator of the 8-Minute Abs, uh, Jamie Brankus. And uh, welcome, sir. Thank you for joining oh, us. Oh, no, my gosh. What a pleasure. What a what a lead-in. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, no, you and you guys are doing great things because I'm learning at four, almost 49 years old. I am not in a good shape myself. I'm actually on a, a mission of trying to find balance um, because I'm traveling a ton, eating poorly, flying and sitting more than I probably should. But I have to because it's the, the job that I have, unfortunately. Um, and it's been educational. I've had uh, I'm doing a nine week meditation program, daily meditation program that I've I've gone off the wagon a little bit on that one but um as we get older things things start to break down maximum viscosity as the Castrol GTX commercial says guess they <laughs> lubricated and moving and all that stuff so uh first and foremost tell us a little bit about both of your journeys in the health and wellness carol you can start first seeing as how you put this together thanks okay so actually my wellness and health journey started back in when I was like in my thirties, um, I had a lot of, um, autoimmune issues that doctors could not, uh, label. So I was labeled, um, you know, idiopathic. Um, and I'd go to the doctor and go, well, what's happening? And they couldn't explain it to me. And then at my last doctor visit, (laughs) uh, the doctor literally looked at me and says this, they handed me a book actually too. and said, it's all in your head. And I'm like, you're serious. I'm breaking out in welts and hives and you're telling me it's all in my head. And that's when I went, whoa, I, I, it's not that I don't like the Western medicine. It is, you know, there's a place for it, uh, which it has saved lives, but I took my health into my own hands. And that meant by completely taking food out of my diet and starting all back over to see what my body's, what was triggers looking at the products that I put onto my skin. And then as I did that, I started healing mm-hmm. um, without the help, the, you know, help of Western medicine. 
-hmm. So when I started seeing my body and my health transform, I started digging into seminars, classes, spirituality, uh, became a certified health coach. And then from there, I just took it even further, you know, to become a shamanic Reiki master, an Aegis Grace educator, a BFRBN um, certified coach, because everything we do touch and say affects not only our physical body, but also our, our metaphysical body. We are energy. Mm -hmm. And no matter what you think, you're on this physical plane here on earth, there is an energetic side to our body. Because mm -hmm. as everybody knows, when you, you never die, you're always alive and alive. Mm -hmm. So when you do pass, you still have energy. So I took that and these classes and created a business called Total Wellness Coach. And my clients, I help them with the aging process. Uh, my little motto is that we are vibrant, not vintage. Mm -hmm. So I do work with a lot of millennials, uh, of course, Generation Xers, which I am. And then the bingo. The yep. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I want to help people realize that they are what they eat. They are what they think about themselves. They are the medicine. They can heal their body. They just have to be willing to put the time, effort, and energy into it. And that's what brings me to what I do today, which I am so passionate about and love. And I'm here to share that with you guys. Awesome. Awesome. And Jamie, you're, uh, you're I mean, that's... My partner in crime. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I can tell you, I, I think uh, mine's going to fail by comparison to, to that. Yep. Uh, that's quite a leading, Carol. That's that, you know, it's impressive and... Uh, you know, I will tell you this, Josh, uh, Carol is a, certainly a, is her, her passion is unparalleled, and that's uh, that's half the battle. Um, but I got into this as uh, I, I really I've been an athlete all my life. When I was in high school, I was the conditioning coach uh, for our baseball team, and uh, I followed suit with uh, a lot of uh, uh, training at that point. And when I went to college, I uh, I got a degree in actually communications. I was going to be a, a sportscaster. And, uh, but I still had a passion for fitness. And, uh, and so I figured I'm going to get a, a, a certification. So I actually get an exercise physiology certification through the American College of Sports Medicine. So I married both of those together and moved out to Los Angeles and started the fitness business in 1985 as a, as a fitness instructor. And, but I knew that I, you know, one on one was great, but I knew I had a little more uh, ambition to help as many people as I could. And so, Lo and behold, I started doing, uh, you know, using my broadcast degree and started doing TV segments for um, ABC affiliate. So I moved back to Tampa. I went to University of South Florida in Tampa. And then all of a sudden, uh, we started talking to, to a, a producer. And he said, you know, I got this guy that wants to do some things, uh, you know, with products and stuff. So we conjured up this idea <laughs> called 8-Minute Abs. And so everybody in, back in 94, you're going back 30 years at yeah. this year. And everybody was thinking, well, you got to do an hour here, an hour there. And so we said, well, we got to be the antithesis to that and say, you know what? It doesn't work. Everybody's still, you know, sitting on the couch. We need to say, let's do it in increments. You know, exercise is like, uh, you know, it's, it's like a piggy bank. The more you put in, the more you get out. So if we do increments, it's accumulative. And so the idea of this eight minutes, you know, there's 14 or 40 minutes in a day. So we said, this is baseline doable. And so it just resonated. But, but Josh, you'll get a kick out of this. The master marketing guru behind 8-Minute Abs was no other than Carl Deichler. Well, Carl Deichler went on to form a, a little company called Beachbody, the mm -hmm. billion-dollar oh, yeah. business now. Yep. And so Carl and I go back 30 years. And uh, what a success story that is. And so we kind of just extrapolated that and, and kind of branched off into a lot of different uh, products and programming. But at, it's funny how programming changes. I was 32 or so, 33 back then. I've got to tell you now, <laughs> I'm a boomer, Josh. Yep. I'm not 43, not 50. I'm 63 now. Yep. So the idea is us boomers, we want to live longer. We want to look younger. We want to feel better. So the idea is now that we want to focus on trying to lessen the gap between our lifespan and our health span. And, you know, we talk about, you know, what's the real cost of aging? You know, what if you do nothing? You know, we know that he who has no time for his health today will have no health for his time tomorrow. So we know it's going to be blood, high blood pressure, diabetes, mm -hmm. heart disease, you know, forms of dementia, forms of cancer, uh, you know, you know, not mobile anymore. 
you know, aches and pains. That's if you do nothing. So it's non-negotiable. You've got to do something because if you rest, you rust. Exactly. And so, you know, yeah. And so in the meantime, we got on the Dr. Oz show. We've helped Kathy Ireland with her programs. Uh, Gene Simmons of KISS, I worked out a few months. Uh, we had a PBS show on, uh, on it's called Fit and Delicious, uh, about two years ago. That went over to what 35 different states and 167 countries with the Department of Defense. So we've had a nice success, but we're not done yet. I know Carol and I we talked about the idea of helping people that are our age. You know, the 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 kids that are in their 20s and so forth, they've got their own programming. Let them do what they have to do. But we can reach, you know, there's 80 million of us baby boomers. That's a big, you know, there's what 330 people in the United States. That's Think about that. It's almost a quarter of us right there that are that age group. And again, we're fighting and scratching. You know, uh, I, there's a saying that we have here. I will not let age change me. I'll change the way I age. And yep. so we really got to get this going. And uh, I think we've hit the right platforms and I think the right uh, personalities and programming to, to really set this apart and point of differentiation. So let's hope so. Yeah. yeah. Well, the boomers is the largest birth rate of all generations and so the, yeah. the the better you can age in that group for us anyway it's less wheelchairs oh, to push around sure. so for so before sure. we get into today's help i gotta ask a few questions about eight minute abs ah, yes. you, so did, 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 who, whose backyard did you shoot that in yeah <laughs> that's funny you say that because it was supposed to be done in we were down in clearwater florida and it was supposed to be done in the studio but it was such a nice day out the director said, hey, let's take the sticks out, the uh, the tripods, and put two tripods out there, and let's get the models behind you, and let's just do it by, there's a little lake over there, and a little tree, and let's put some uh, crazy music behind it, and uh, yep. let's let's try to do it outside, and that's exactly how it came about, and it was just, you know, it was one of those things that it just resonated at the time, and and you know, it's funny, we helped a lot of people back then, and, and, and Josh, I, I Nobody knew, you know, back then the internet wasn't even, right. well, I don't think it started. You bought it on ago. a VCR tape. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was VCR for yeah. sure. Yeah. And and so, you know, it's, it's amazing that people still to this day come up and say, hey, you know, gosh, I still do those programs. But we started to get back into this because everybody was putting my stuff on YouTube. And the, yeah. and the darn thing gained over 100 million views on YouTube. And yeah. I said, you know what? I got to start doing this again. So I started producing more videos. And that are more age specific. So it was the reason was YouTube because I thought, you know, why not us? I mean, I'm just the originator of it. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, so it made more sense to get back and put my hat back in the ring. So here we are. Yeah, there's so I the, there's a guy named G GB on YouTube that has eight minute abs on here, and it's got 35 million views. Yeah. I, I've tried to reach out to him, and I don't even know where he's at. And we we've shut a couple of people down, cease and desist. But yeah. I said, you know what? Let him go. Let's just get it. Yeah. Get the views up there. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's amazing. Um, so, well, now it's now I'm playing GB's video because I clicked on it. Um, so and so this is and this is you have to laugh at this. What what you had to have seen something about Mary? Oh my gosh! Yeah. I I couldn't believe Josh when somebody told me that they said you aren't going to believe, but they just did a spoof on Eight Minute Abs. I said yeah. no, that's crazy. So we went and saw the movie, of course. It was a great movie with Ben Stiller. Oh, and, my God. Uh, Harlan Williams was the guy who basically was in the car with Ben Stiller and said, hey, yeah. you ever hear of 8-Minute Abs? Well, he's a comedian from Canada. I met him about 10 years ago, and he's a great guy. He ad-libbed that whole thing with Ben Stiller, and, and yeah. it was just a, a way to riff off each other. And it's really great because it, it showed you that it resonated with a large audience. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it just... It made sense, and, and who it was a great way to get you know uh, instant uh, recognition in a major movie. So mm -hmm. it was kind of cool. So, so last question, then we're going to dig in here. Yes, uh, my, these these are my these are my inquiring mind mm -hmm. questions of gr <laughs> growing up. So I graduated in 1994 in high school. So oh, I remember I, re I remember it. Uh, I remember the eight minute abs. I remember um, obviously something about Mary. I'm a I'm a huge uh, Stiller all Stiller family yep. great uh, fan. Um, and so, you know, the, that part of the movie, he's, he's, you know, Stiller says, well, what about six minute abs? And, yes. he's, and he's like, step into my office. You're effing fired, right? Because fired. that's crazy. Yeah. 
<laughs> where where did eight minutes come into play? Was that just a was is that is there's obviously some sort of physio something. There's something about well, you know it really to be honest with you, it, it's the alliteration. It just you know if you think about the letter eight, it all comes around yep. as infinity, and yep. and so the idea was that if we did this right and it, it, it just made sense, seven minutes didn't blow off your tongue the way yep. eight minutes did, and so. Uh, we just fig figured, you know, I did the math for it. I said it was 1,440 minutes in a day. If yeah. you do eight, eight minutes, that's one one eightieth of your day. Who doesn't have that? You know, so, right. and that's kind of how it kind of just started to to basically, you know, come into being. And, uh, but yeah, si seven minutes wouldn't have worked. Yeah, <laughs> you needed eight. Yeah. So, <laughs> eight so, minutes in. Yeah. Eight minutes. Can't be seven. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's talk about, you know, we, you got, you, you've both done a great job at, at aging well and learning. And K Carol, one of the things that's interesting is, you know, um, Jamie's an athlete. So he's, you know, for, you know, there's a lot of people that can say, well, yeah, you're an athlete. You've been one for a long time. You got good genes. You got the athlete gene in you, whatever. Uh, Carol, you went through like a life changing, you know, you were sick and found, found all of this stuff and started to develop, develop programs. It's kind of an, an interesting combo. You know, mm -hmm. so what what are you guys doing today from your program standpoint? I'd love to learn more about the um, the Grace. I, I, I closed ageless it. Grace, it, yeah. It, it, ageless Grace program because it's, um, you know, one of the things that that I find that I'm learning about is it's not just working out. It's not just spending eight minutes oh. working working your body out. It's it's mind, body, soul, mm -hmm. breathing, everything. Um, that's one of the things I've been nice. learning in this meditation program. Um, so, so tell me more about, you know, kind of some of these things and what you're doing and, and how do you get, um, how do you get people interested? Like, how do you get people that, do, do people just call you and say, I've had it, I want to live longer, I've eaten too many Big Macs, or is this <laughs> something that you guys are, you know, doing a massive outreach to try to get folks to realize that they need to get smarter with their lives. Right. So for, for me, um, I've actually have been a gym rat. Um, my dad started me <laughs> and my sisters. We, I was probably five years old yeah. in, in the gym. And actually he would take us jogging around the block, even in the wintertime. I grew up outside of Youngstown, Struthers, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And we'd be outside jogging in snow. And I remember just one day I stop and go, why are we doing this? And he says, because if you get sick, I want your body to fight for you. I want your immune system strong. And that always like resonated with me. And of course, you know, um, I was a competitive gymnast. Uh, almost 16, 17 years of my life, um, played on the girls and boys tennis team track team. So fitness was always a part of my life because my dad actually wanted boys and he got all girls. <laughs> yeah. So he, you know, let's, let's let the girls be the active ones. How so, many, how many siblings do you have? A total of five, five girls, five girls. Yep. Wow. Even the dog was a girl. What, so yeah, yeah my poor dad and he wanted <laughs> boys. And of course I have a twin sister. <laughs> so before he thought he was going to have boys and no, two more girls. So, oh wow. yeah, wow. yeah. Um, so when I was going through all these um, health issues, I never stopped exercising. And back then I couldn't afford a gym. So I started making up programs in my own home. I bought weights from a garage sale. I mean, um, there was a point in my life where I was a single mom with two little babies, two children. And, you know, I'm taking care of my, my two children. And so, like I said, I found weights, I found exercise bikes, and that was my gym in my house and I would work out and I created my own routines that worked for me but then I also started developing a diet plan a food plan um, that can work also for my system and as like I said I went through all these changes with health and, and it also um, the American standard diet um, it, which is sad and that's what it, to me it, it, it actually says sad um, I noticed that it, it actually started in the 90s. And that's when my immune system really ramped up is because they took out the natural ingredients out of our food, which our body can process and put in synthetics, put in more um, ways to preserve the food longer. And that's when I started getting even, if you want to say sicker. 
And um, that's when I had to go to a holistic type of diet where it was literally eating lean meat, clean, uh, all green and taking out what worked for me and what didn't work for me. So it was a trial and error for many years. And again, when I started educating, educating myself on the food, um, that's, and it's kind of fun too, because as I was going through this, um, faith really became, um, strong for me because there was days I was, I mean, I was suffering and I, I remember one day I dropped down on my knees and said, God, if, if I can help myself, then I want to help other people because this isn't no way to live when you're literally feeling like your body, you're dying from the inside out. I would tell people I can literally feel my blood boil. Mm -hmm. What if I ate something wrong? And, um, and that's when the healing occurred. And that's when spirituality for me came into play because, um, literally I can feel angels around me and, um, and being the good, good Catholic girl, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, um, a lot of things people will say, oh, you know, that's, you know, kind of like taboo. No, no, there are angels and people who are around to assist us. And I truly believe in it now. And my intuition, my intuitive abilities um, very much opened up. And so I incorporated that into what I do now with helping my clients. So you asked about how, how do people find me? Um, it's, it's actually people are drawn to me. Mm -hmm. uh, basically with the same problems. Um, I do have um, a Facebook business account, which I reach out to people and I share experiences, um, exercises, all gain clients through that. I, as I was just telling you um, earlier, I, I just competed in a bikini body fitness competition, posted that. And I actually had several more people reach out to me, which are going to now be potential clients because they want to see themselves fit and healthy. So I say that a lot of people are drawn to me just because of their own health issues and they want to, they want to feel better. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and it's not just strictly females. I actually have male clients as well uh, because I'll say something or do something that resonates with them. And um, they reach out to me and we connect in. Um, I, I really work very strongly with my clients because I want them to become successful and um, so far it's been really good. So yeah, that's how people, I, I say people are drawn to me. I'm going to be your male client wearing your Skinify spandex suit. Absolutely. <laughs> Those are I'm awesome. Yeah, no, you, no, 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 you don't. No, you don't. No, I don't. Maybe I don't. Yeah, no, you don't. No, but I think everybody in my town's going to walk down Main Street with it. You get it. Yeah. What, so Skinify resistant band mm -hmm. leggings and leggings. Pow power sleeves. So this they are awesome. Um, three, four, um, two, three or four bands. And what it does is it applies resistance training to the muscle. So the muscle thinks you're working it harder when you're not, mm -hmm. which then affects the pituitary gland. So you're actually burning more calories and sweating, <laughs> which is great because I want that, you know, heartbeat to go up and you're actually, you're, you're, you're burning more calories. And I know they guarantee up to 400 more calories a day. So, which is great if you're in a, I never say you, you're wanting to lose weight. You're wanting to burn fat because you want to create the muscle because muscle is sexy and it burns the calories. So mm -hmm. that's our goal. Okay. Those are cool. Now, yeah. for those of you that are watching, Jamie's in the gym standing up and, you know, we just talked about how you worked out from home and you had to find your own program. So do you, do you have an actual, do both of you have gyms that people come to or I have an office I go to my office I'm sitting yep. here in my my business office in my home right now but I do okay. have an office that I work out of and then I work with people one-on-one -on -one or through zoom yeah yeah or I go to a facility so like I work at the YMCA um yep. some of my clients have YMCA memberships I meet them there and we work out there yeah YMCA is a great program I'm on yeah. the board of governors for my local YMCA that's yeah. actually right next door there you go so, big fan so Oh, and sure. so Jamie, is that your gym? Is that? Yes, actually, this is our fitness lab, as we call it. And uh, we still have one on one uh, clients that I've had for years, but I'm certainly uh, gravitating more towards a virtual platform yeah. uh, where we can certainly help a lot of people at one sitting. And uh, I just see that's the, the wave of the future and the future is now with live streaming. It's amazing what we're doing right now. 
But yeah. to have access to live programming, um, there's something about it that makes it uh, so uh, it's uh, it's tantalizing for somebody on the other line to say, oh, you know what? In real time, I'm seeing that guy. He's in my you know living room doing exercise with me. And we sort of it's almost like when when Jack Lane, who is my mentor, the late, great Jack Lane, who was mm -hmm. on TV for 34 years. Oh, and, yeah. and it was the idea that he was like their best friend every afternoon. Yeah. He'd get the moms and the kids up and moving. And so it's just a crazy little side note as um, as we move forward here. Uh, the Lelaine family, I just wrote a book to, uh, three years ago with Elaine Lelaine. God bless you. She's 98 years old. Uh, wow. It was called If You Want to Live, Move, Putting the Boom Back to Boomers. Yep. And so Elaine wants Jack's legacy to be where people remember him because when people get in their eh, 40s, they don't quite remember Jack because – you know, he was relevant in the in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and with, you know, a little bit in the 80s. But the fact is, you know, he was the godfather of fitness and we wouldn't be in oh, business, yeah. Carol or I, if he wasn't yeah. uh, paving the way for us. And so in last month, I get a phone call from Elaine's agent saying, hey, would you like to become uh, one of the uh, only three people at this point to become a Lelaine legend uh, fitness pro? And uh, I said, my gosh, I'd be honored. I would absolutely be honored because, you know, like I say, Jack was a mentor to me. And um, funny story real quick, when Jack was 92 and he passed at 96. Yep. So Denise Austin, who was another fitness pro, you might've heard of. Yep. So she introduces me, to, she goes, Jack, hey, this is the eight minute abs guy. So remember, Jack was 92 at the time. He gets me in a headlock, starts giving me a nuggie, right? Yep. He gives me in a nuggie. He says, that's what's wrong with you guys. You think there's one body part. <laughs> he starts laughing and he says, no, I love it. He goes, you, you just, you know, help as many people as you can. He was such an energetic guy. And, and Elaine is the same way. She's effervescent uh, yep. at 98. And God bless her. Like I said, she's still going strong. Cognitive skills are right out, right where they should be. And uh, that's a perfect example of a living, breathing testimonial to, to healthy living. But Jack Mullane, Josh, said it best. He said he had a great line. He said, if exercise is king, nutrition is queen. You put them together and you have a kingdom. And like what Carol was saying, you know, with the emotional, spiritual side of things, you know, from a, a physics standpoint, you still, if, if somebody wants to lose weight or, or get in shape and live a healthier, longer lifestyle, you still have to have good nutrition. You got to move a little bit. You can't take those two elements out. Mm -hmm. And I've got to tell you, as we age, there's certain macronutrients, if you will, because everybody says, well, how do you stay so lean? And I know I'm telling you, Carol and I have yeah. talked about this before. We need protein and, mm -hmm. you know, especially as we age. And it's almost like you can't even imagine, uh, you know, when, when you start thinking about, you know, the, all the studies that are out there and so forth. We know now that as you age, there's something that called sarcopenia happening. Sar mm -hmm. Sarcopenia is this muscle leaking, Josh, and it, and it happens to every one of us. And if you don't do any resistance training, I've got to tell you, your, your muscle mass starts to decrease and you start exactly. to think, oh, shoot, I'm getting a little more lumpier and bumpier in certain mm -hmm. areas. And so then we said, well, you know, you have to have muscle activation, but you have to protein synthesis as a part of that. So there's a formula that we usually uh, kind of fit in, into our uh, programming. And it's, <laughs> believe it or not, it's a lot of protein. And, and so yeah, let's say your listeners right now, you want to go 0.75% to one gram of protein per body weight. Now, what that equals, let's say if you have a listener that's 120 pounds, that means they have to get anywhere between 90 and 120 grams of protein a day. Now, a person that's 150 pounds, they've got to get 112 to 150 grams of protein a day. Somebody who's 200 pounds, that's 150 to 200 grams a day. That is not an easy chore to do. It's a lot of, it's a lot of protein. It's right. a lot. And, you know, and so we know that, you know, we've got to get uh, what I call people, you know, it's, it's lean, green, and clean. You know, you want to have lean protein. You have to have certainly vegetables, anything that's green. And, yep. of course, uh, clean is uh, limit the empty uh, calories as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And because people always tell you, well, how do you stay lean? There's an old saying that um, lean people lead lean lives. And it's their habits which mm -hmm. make them lean cooking, eating, shopping, fitness, but even more importantly, thinking habits. And just like Carol was saying, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a whole lifestyle program and, and that's what you need. Yeah. And it's not just fitness, it's not just nutrition, not just spirituality, it's all everything mm -hmm. in one. 
And, mm -hmm. uh, and it's got to be baseline doable. If we told a couch potato right now and said, you know what, you gotta, you got to be at least an hour and a half in the gym every day, they're never going to do it, ever. So the idea was that, and even go back to the eight minutes aspect, it, that was the catch. It was mm -hmm. the catch because, hey, if you've got eight minutes, well, we know that maybe, guess what? You're feeling pretty peppy today. You do a double eight. Now it's 16 yeah. minutes. Then it's 24. Then it's 32. And that, But you got to catch them somehow and hook them first. Mm -hmm. And, and that's how we did it. But it's still to this day, we just want you to get as many movements and minutes yeah. as you can, but you've got to have strength training. And it doesn't mean you got to be Arnold Schwarzenegger out there. It's just a little resistance to get that muscle tissue up. Because I'm telling you, if you don't, you, old age starts to say, the old thing, right. you don't stop exercising because we grow old. We grow old because we stop exercising. So you have to do some movement and more isn't better. Better is better, and you have to have the resistance. To me, it's even more important than cardiovascular. I, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, especially as we age. So yeah. that's my two cents. Yeah. yeah. With Jamie's, you know, response there, a lot of people don't realize that without the muscle, you're not standing up straight and tall. You're not taking the deep breaths, sure. and you're also um, prone then to falling because you don't have the lower body strength. Mm -hmm. So Jamie and I are really good for, we've got to strengthen the core and the quads, your hamstrings, that's key. And working your stability muscles in your legs. So, and again, as you age, that's something that's really important. We want the muscle. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Josh, you know, I think a lot of people, again, at age, really, uh, you know, still losing weight's a, a, a key factor for them. And I always talk about throwing away that scale. But, but you know, those three numbers do mean a lot to people. It's uh, yeah. depending on those three numbers. It's a fit day or a fat day. But yeah. when I talked about lean people having thinking habits, I almost want to think, you know, when you go on a diet, everybody says, well, you can't eat that. You can't eat this. Eat less of this, less of that. I want to juxtapose a letter saying diet, D-I-E-T, to edit, E-D-I-T. Throw those around a little bit and not think of less, but think of the word more, okay? This is your listeners can do this. Not less, but more. More vegetables, more fruits, more healthy grains, more fiber, more lean protein, okay? More water, more sleep, more movement. So exactly. it's the idea of that juxtaposition of the letters, not diet, but edit, and make these little minor adjustments, and you're going to feel like a million bucks. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. So you just try to do things that are going to be um, doable for people instead of saying, you got to go on a diet. You can't eat this. No, we just want to eat more of the good stuff. Right. But you don't have to be perfect. You know, we always follow the 80-20 rule. You know, and if you just look at your plate and you say, okay, is this going to get me closer to my goal or further away? And if you can say closer 80% of the time, that means 20%. You can eat what you want and exactly. you're still going to succeed and win at losing. And so that's where that idea of, Focus on progress, not perfection, because mm -hmm. nobody's going to be perfect on a diet, except for Carol, of course, but, uh, <laughs> especially when she's training for, for a yeah. contest, because every little yeah. ounce means a big difference. Yeah. But most people just generally want to get in shape. They want to lose some weight, lose some inches, and again, be a little healthier, and especially mm -hmm. as we age. So we know what works and we know what doesn't. Right. So I hope your listeners can take that and say, okay, I can think about that. Now I think of the word more. I know mm -hmm. I got to eat more protein. I know we're kind of where I need to have the grams. And, and again, it's very difficult, let's face it, to get that in your everyday nutritional plan. So sometimes you got to have some supplements. And I mean supplements, meaning yeah. I, I, I drink a shake every day. And I'll tell you why. Because I know if I can get 25, 30 grams of protein in, whey protein in, yep. in a 30 seconds, I down it. It's 150 calories. I'm out the door. That right there is, I'm telling you, a shake a day, and there's tons of shakes out there that you can get, but make sure it's, you know, a sufficient yeah, amount. Yeah. But because, you know, three ounces of chicken breast is about 25 grams of protein. You know, you got 27 grams of protein in beef. You have Greek yogurt, which is great. You know, three quarters of a cup is 17 grams. You know, cottage cheese, 18 grams for three quarters of a cup. You know, black beans, 16 grams. But the fact is, if you need 120 grams, you... <laughs> That's a lot of food. So yep. I, I believe in those quick shakes. And I've got to tell you, because it just gets in, you know, the, the grams you need to push you over that edge to keep that protein synthesis. And I'm telling you, it works. So yeah. 
and muscle recovery. It, it, it yeah, helps. after workout. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, so a lot of people don't know this, and you can't tell by the the, the physique, the wonderful physique I have. But I was actually uh, one of, if not the only male allowed in Gloria Stevens Figure Salons. I don't know if you ever heard of that place. It was a East Coast women only figure salon chain. My mother was a director of. Oh my um, gosh! Like the, one of the well, no, you got some muscle on you, Josh. Oh yeah, yeah. No, they had well, they had one and a half million members at one point in time. Wow! Uh, in the seventies, yeah. So and. Jack was a, the godfather, but it was also fitness was also the uh, fitness mm -hmm. gyms were created through Fred Astaire dance studios. A lot of people yeah, don't know that, sure. that, 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 how important that was to the fitness world. Um, so there's, there's two yeah. things. The first thing is, you know, so we talk about, you know, in the world today, I mean, obesity's never been worse than it's, than it's ever been. Um, there's never been more contradictory uh, discussions on what type we should do a keto diet. We should do a a uh, high protein, low carbohydrate diet. We should do a sugar diet. I haven't, that's the one I've been doing. It's not working out too well for me. So, um, but like, yeah. you know, yeah. I guess my question to you is, uh, and I, and I was, when I was growing up, it was like, Hey, the 99 cent diet book that you get at the grocery store will work if you stick to it. I mean, are there certain diets that just work for certain people mm -hmm. or are these, are there a lot of these things a fad? I mean, you see this cycle, right? So Gloria Stevens, all women's figure salons at the time was the largest, one of the largest in the country. And then it went away and then curves came back 20 years later. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And everybody's jumping yeah. on trampolines, women only trampolines for yeah. five years. And then right. that disappeared. And then the next thing. So, you know, are, are a lot of these really fads or are there programs that are just designed based on people that will, will, will keto work for somebody and not work for somebody else? Mm -hmm. Will, you know, this high protein diet work, for everybody like what what's your take on that go ahead carol I'll, i got my answer but go oh, ahead you know for me so each client it, it's individual um i will i listen to what they're saying i listen to what they've done in the past what worked for them and then we come up with a plan for them not all diets fit everybody mm -hmm. it's what's going to work best for their body mm -hmm. so we're so for me i incorporate I actually do the lean, green, and clean. And I do with my clients, it's removing the sugar, it's removing the dairy, anything that's inflammation, but it's also eating right for their blood type. I mean, because everybody is from a different area across the, the world, what their background is, their genetic makeup. Mm -hmm. So I work with them, but we also are going to be removing carbs because mm -hmm. a lot of the foods that we eat today, again, I, I tell my clients, if you cannot pronounce the word that's on the ingredients, you don't want it in your body. Five and less is best. Mm -hmm. We work up a program that's going to be built to the protein, the fats, and the carbs that are going to they're going to be taking in, plus the calories. And then we're going to add that movement. I'm also going to be adding in resistance training with them because I want to see them burn those calories. So there's not one fad diet out there that matches everybody. I'm going to work with what works with my client because that's what they need and what their body is asking. So Jamie, what do you have? Well, Carol, no, I'm, I'm totally agreeing with that. Yeah. And, and Josh is funny because some diets will work with obviously mm -hmm. some people and, and it's whatever you want to stick with, because well, what I know is that a lot of diets that cut out complete food groups yeah. are, you know, you're going to be malnourished on some level on something mm -hmm. else. I always go back to a registered dietitian's you know, uh, programming, if you will. But Carol just touched on something called inflammation. And I like to call it inflammaging because yeah. as we age, our joints, they get red, they get swollen, they get in pain. And, you know, you got to be careful with inflammation because as we age, Josh, it's very important. There's chronic disease that's associated with it, whether it's obesity, arthritis, heart disease, diabetes, and there's certain foods that can mm -hmm. certainly uh, enhance that. Now, if, if you're eating red meat or processed meat or fried foods or, like she was just saying, refined carbs, and mm -hmm. that means the, the white pastas, the yeah. white rice, the breads, uh, the sugar, that is going to produce inflammation. And that's what a lot of people that are our age start to get. And they start thinking, oh, my gosh, I feel so bad. We need to – how do you get rid of that? Well, here's the thing. Green leafy vegetables, yeah. um, vegetables in, in general, yeah, olive oil, berries, yeah. uh, cashews and almonds, uh, 
Again, uh, something like uh, dark chocolate, salmon. These are things that we know help inflammation. And so you almost have to think what's their goals and objectives. And then you can yield a program based on that. But when it comes to losing weight, I don't care what anybody says, there's an energy balance to that. You either have, <laughs> you're either burning calories or you're storing them as fat. I don't care what anybody says. And so there, there's the energy balance. If you want to be in a negative balance, well, you're going to have to have something, of course, that's, that's a little healthier. And like Carol was saying about real ingredients, uh, yeah. that's extremely important because, when, you know, if it's right out of Junior's chemistry set, you know, and you can't read it, I can guarantee your body can't process it either because mm -hmm. it doesn't mm -hmm. know what it's doing. So, right. but the, yeah, with the idea of, of, I can tell you with sugar, it's interesting. Most people, as an average, get 22 teaspoons of sugar a day. What they want the average person to get, men should get anywhere between eight or nine teaspoons a day, which is about 150 calories from teaspoons of sugar. Women, about six teaspoons of sugar. And of course, I, that's about 100 calories. That goes quick. That goes quick because I can tell you, you know, a can of Red Bull is about five and a half teaspoons of, of sugar. You get uh, McDonald's uh, shakes, 16 teaspoons of sugar. Mm -hmm. You can't out train a poor diet. There's yep. no way, there's not enough hours in the gym. So again, depending on your goals, you know, what, what are your objectives here? What's your why? You know, and Carol mm -hmm. can explain a why, but you know, mm -hmm. it's like peeling an onion. What, what's your reason behind the reason that you want to get motivated to continue to do something healthy for yourself? Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, that's what we try to look at, but every diet works for, for a certain amount of time. But yep. remember, we're not talking diet. We're talking edit. Remember? Yeah. We're, making those we're talking changes. longevity. We're yeah. talking about this is a lifestyle. This is a behavioral change that you want to make so that you can be playing with your grandchildren, holding them, running up and down the steps without being and hurting mm. and having that inflammation. You guys would be terrified to go out to eat with me. Terrified. <laughs> Well, I'm, 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 I'm sitting here and I'm like, all oh, makes sense. But since I was 22 years old, when I go to a restaurant, which because I, my work, I go to restaurants fairly often. <clears throat> um, I'll tell the, the waiter, the waitress surprise me and people like they, they go crazy. I was just having this conversation with a friend of mine yesterday because I was at, uh, the Nunzios in Monroeville, right. Pennsylvania last week, uh, wow. which was fantastic. I actually got to meet the Hanson brother, the real real wow. life Hanson brother of Slapshot the movie. There was one of oh, those one, one of the three brothers whose last name was actually yes. that they that they yeah I made Denunzio was a caddy in Caddyshack. He was oh, the caddy geez. that went to get the Coke and he wouldn't didn't want to pay 50 cents. So I got going to the room where everybody's at and I'm like uh, I said, oh, you ain't getting no stinking Coke and nobody laughed. I'm like, this is the best material, right? <laughs> Caddyshack. <laughs> That's a good line. Know, yeah. Right? And I sit down and, and the guy next to me is like, hey, do you, have you ever seen Slapshot? And I said, yeah, of course. He says, you, ever yes. met, you know the Hanson brothers? I said, yeah, you want to meet the Hanson? I met him the next day. He's going to be on the podcast. Amazing nice. guy. Wonderful human being. But I said, surprise me. My friend was telling me the other day. He goes, he goes I'm sitting there looking at you and, you, and you say surprise me. And they brought me this seafood dish that was loaded with shrimp and scallops and everything else. He's like, and creamy pasta and all this stuff and bread. And it was fantastic. It was delicious. It was a gout flare up waiting to happen. Um, <laughs> but like for me, like that's my, that's probably one of my biggest problems is I enjoy having meals like that on a regular basis because it's, I'm, I'm leaving for Ocean City, Maryland uh, day after tomorrow. Uh, then I'm going to St. Joseph, Missouri, and I got to have, you know, I got to have a steak in St. Joseph, Missouri. I got to, I got to go to the bar barber shop, uh, director's cut in Kansas City. If you ever go to Kansas City Airport, go to the director's cut. It's a bar. You don't need to drink, but it's cool. But they get a, they give you a hot shave too. They got barber barber chairs there. Oh wow! Oh yeah, Carol, there you go. Yeah, yeah. and shine your shoes. For? Oh yeah, it's pretty cool. So, <laughs> no, um, but but Josh, I want to go back to that. Now, see, here's the thing. Yeah. I, I think you're you're gonna be okay. You can navigate through every meal. I'm telling mm -hmm. you. And and you know we have what we call portion distortion out there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the idea is we can utilize our hand as yeah. our best portion guide. And I'm gonna I'm gonna make you do this. I'm telling you, you're gonna you're gonna succeed. This is now, good. You're gonna love it, Josh. Yeah, yeah, Josh, your listeners are gonna really enjoy yeah. this. So now, of course, when you go out to eat, they serve you heaping mounds of food. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's just the nature of our business. Now, protein, right? We gotta have a protein. Yeah. So the RDs, the registered dietitians, tell us we want three to four ounces of protein. 
Josh, that fits in the palm of your hand, a deck of cards or a bar of soap. That's the portion that you're looking at. I mean, when's the last time you went to a steak restaurant, they served you just, you know, three to four ounces. You probably get up and walk out, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's the protein. Now for guys, especially guys that are, you know, your size, you're, you're a big guy. I mean, you're, you're a bulky husky. guy. You're, you got muscle. Husky. You need, you need husky. Exactly. <laughs> you need five, six ounces for sure. But for, for somebody who's a lady and so forth, three ounces is sufficient mm -hmm. for that meal. Because now let's look at vegetables. Okay. Two hand, cupped hands. That's the vegetable portion. So now you're navigating the plate, right? Your starch, okay? Your rice, your pastas, your potatoes. That, believe it or not, is the size of your fist. Now, I'm half Italian, I must tell you. <laughs> When's the last time you went to uh, Denunzio's and they served you mm -hmm. pasta that size? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not going to happen. So you got to be careful. So if you're navigating around the plate, it looks like hmm, I'm filling up on the vegetables. I got a little bit of protein, a little bit of starch. Remember, it's not diet. You're still eating. Our yeah. thumb, our yeah. thumb... That's the tablespoon, the sour creams, the uh, peanut butters, the salad dressings, the thumb tip right mm -hmm. here. That's things like butter and mayo and some certain oils. Now, a cupped hand is our snacks. It's mm -hmm. about one ounce. Things like nuts or chips or Doritos or tortilla chips. That's about one mm -hmm. ounce. So you can safely navigate through any meal when you start thinking that, okay, it's all portions. So it's produce, it's protein, it's, it's portions. And you can't go wrong. And I will say one thing that, you know, good health isn't about chance. Good health is about choice. So mm -hmm. depending on what you want and what your, your goal is, we can, we can really focus in on, on doable, you know, propositions like this. We know that portions are going to work for us. We know that we got to watch the sugar. We know we got to watch the refined carbs. We know we have to have protein. We know we got to move a little bit, but more isn't better. So we know we got to have strength mm -hmm. training. And so you start implementing these little things. And you'd be surprised how your body shifts and transforms. And at that point, then it shifts to the mind. So, you know what? Maybe I won't have that extra serving of uh, pasta and beans, the pasta vajol, you know? So it's yeah. going to be where that's how you, you, you know, kind of manifest a healthy lifestyle and right. still live because nobody wants to go on a diet. Deprivation is a sure way for failure. We don't want that. Who wants right. to live like that? Yeah. So well, that's, that's like going to be my next part. But this is, yeah. all right, can you zoom in on this, Adam? I actually took a picture of this plate because it was amazing. Uh, that's Denunzio's pasta plate. Oh, it's not coming in because of the light, but oh, it's, no, it's, could, it's about see it. it's, it's like six uh, <laughs> fistfuls of yeah, pasta. That's a, it was oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And, right, yeah, and I was just going to say, Jamie, uh, what you just said is fantastic. You you don't have. I call people. You don't have to suffer <laughs> because yep. so many people are like, I don't want to suffer. I don't want to deprive myself. You don't. Take it home with you. Do the proper servings. Get what you want because we don't want you to be like craving. And yeah. then take it home and either freeze it and have it as another meal or two meals or three meals. So it, stretch it, that it, meal. Kara, with that, I, I will say this too. And, and those we got great strategies for that, yeah. Josh. But the other thing is this. You're going on the road. You got people that are you know living a, a lifestyle where they may have to travel a little bit here and there. Listen, there's going to be days where you're not going to be as healthy as you want. Mm -hmm. You know what you got to say? So what? You yep. pick it up the next meal, the exactly. next day, the next week. That's, that's how you don't beat yourself up. Because otherwise, you know, if you're beating yourself up constantly, negative, negative, I can't believe I ate that. I can't believe I ate mm -hmm. too much. Just make, just pick it up the right next in. meal. Yeah. And that way you can, you can win at losing long term. Because that's not a diet mentality. That's a health mentality. Yeah. And so... Think about it. Just call it so what. It's a so, so what. Now, if you have too many so what days, we're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what that's what. So there was that's kind of queuing up my uh, my next question and thought. And what you're saying, you guys are looking to do is get that more interactive engagement mm -hmm. and and virtual and and all of that. And and so for me, you know, accountability is the biggest piece to this, right? If you don't have an, an accountability partner, or accountability coach, and an accountability program. Uh, shoot, I got to call Jamie and I got to yeah. talk to him or I got to go on Zoom and he's going to know that I had the Denunzio special seafood and <laughs> followed it up with a loaf of garlic bread and, you know, yeah. so what did I so what did the week? Um, yeah. <laughs> I, so so where are your biggest challenges with like, so people that aren't successful with these programs aren't successful, not because the program doesn't work, it's because mm -hmm. they don't work, right? 
And so where do you see the biggest? So it, it, we'll use me as an example. I'm a great example. I'm a prime example of a failed system. I got sick in 2008, uh, thought I was going to die, had pneumonia, had a, had a reaction to the, to the medication they gave me. I went blind for a little bit. Um, oh, and then they found some, they found a mass in my lung and, you know, I thought I was going to, I thought I had lung cancer. I was convinced I was going to die and, uh, it didn't, I was fortunate enough to be, you know, okay and fine, but it was, it was a shock to my system. Um, I had pneumonia was out for a month laying in bed and I gained, I was in great shape until 2008. I played sports. I wouldn't call myself an athlete, but I was in good shape. Um, Sometimes people would even say I was. It looked like I was a, the the saying is a manorexic because I was so skinny at times, right? And and uh, um, then all of a sudden I was laying in bed sick. I gained probably twenty pounds over the course of a number of months, and and then over the course of the next fifteen sixteen years, you know I've gained every year and haven't lost any. Right? Uh, I've had a couple of instances where um, I had a friend of mine. Um, that challenged me to climb a 14 or with him. Uh, I basically said, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say no to a challenge. And so right. I didn't. And he's like, you probably are also not going to train that much. And so I went on the keto diet. Uh, I actually did a podcast about it. Went on the keto diet, walked every day for a couple months, lost 25 pounds, uh, attempted the hike and then uh, went right back and then ended up, you know, in, in, the, in the bad place again. Um, I make every excuse. And I'm fully admitting to it. I make every excuse as to why I can't or I shouldn't. My driveway is 800 feet long. So yeah. I, I literally, and I'm not saying that as like a braggadocious thing, but it's, I live in the woods. And so in order for me to check my mail, you know, just to do that, I could walk almost a quarter of a mile just mm -hmm. walking my driveway to check the mail, but I take my golf cart, right? So it's it, these psychological uh, things. And, and, you know, I have this crazy feeling like my grandmother passed away uh, so t uh, November 26, Carol, you heard the story about my grandmother. She, right. di she died five days shy of a hundred and a half sweeping, oh, sweeping her deck, preparing for a party with drinking alcohol and eating steak and Portuguese bread. And, um, you know, and so I have that false expectation of, and she put a pound of sugar in her coffee and she drank Coca-Cola and, you know, she was one of those unique ones that was able to, I guess, cheat the system. But we also, we also, I, we grew up, uh, we, we either, uh, raised, uh, killed or, or, or bartered food. So we, we had no, while we were, uh, not wealthy in the seventies and eighties, we weren't eating anything with preservatives. It was all, right. Everything back it was then all was grown. So yeah. It was all yeah. grown or, or all yep. that stuff. So, so and it, was, it was, and it was made with love. It was homemade. It yeah. wasn't opening up a package right. and dumping it. Yeah, it, this, there's a difference with the, the way our food is processed today from back in the 70s. So here's my question to you. I walk into your office or I walk into your gym and I'm like, hey, I, I'm, 40, I'm pushing 50 and I, and I, and by, and I get a six-year-old and a 17-year-old. I, I, you know, I'm going to be, I'm gonna, I, I could be in a wheelchair when my youngest goes to <laughs> yeah. get his diploma, but here, here's my question to you. A guy like me walks in, you know, I need help. You know, I need to get myself right. You know, I need, you're going to turn to rust um, if I rest and I'm a couch potato and I'm probably a failure waiting to happen all over again. How do you, because I'm sure this has happened a thousand times, million times, right? You sold millions of eight men and abs and there's probably a very high percentage of people that weren't successful because they didn't hit play. Right. Probably. How do you, <laughs> how do you two have and contain and hold i mean your energy is like ridiculous i can feel it from boston <laughs> like i'm just sitting here like you know you guys lighten the room up so um how do you guys keep from getting discouraged with you know probably a a, a, a strong failure rate based on the person not on you like how do you well, keep it going you never fail unless you stop trying that mm -hmm. that's the first one and i i right off the bat but i almost guarantee you know from accountability standpoint because of course you know you know, we can work one-on-one -on -one with people, but from an overall standpoint, you know, Weight Watchers worked because why? People would have to go and they could weigh themselves at home, but when they had to go in and weigh in front of somebody, there was that accountability factor, Josh, yeah. just like you were saying. And, but I can tell you from a physics standpoint, you know, your fork and spoon are still your best piece of fitness equipment. So mm -hmm. what I ask people to do for seven days, I want to see what is their 
I want to assess what they're doing as far as eating, because uh-huh. I can tell you this, it's not going to be the fitness side of things that are going to sabotage it. It's going to be the nutrition. That's the hardest uh-huh. part. Yeah. Exercise is good. It's nice, but it's, it's nutrition, your fork and spoon. That's it. And mm-hmm. because we want to see exactly, there's going to be patterns on that page of, you know, what do you eat for breakfast? Maybe you don't eat breakfast. Okay. So there's going to be red flags that we can actually see. And we've been doing this long enough, you know, based on registered dietitian driven strategies mm-hmm. that you can see what's a red flag and what's not. So if we could just kind of navigate through somebody's lifestyle based on, of course, their current lifestyle habits, mm-hmm. and we get a snapshot of where they're at. That's why we do a questionnaire up front. Do they mm-hmm. eat out a lot? Okay, well, that tells us something. Do they eat home a lot? Uh, do they like to snack? Do they have uh, cravings? What kind of foods? Do they drink alcohol? Do they? So we can get a, an idea of a person's lifestyle and then kind of maneuver around that. And based on our, our course expertise at that point, then we could recommend. But all the time going through their lifestyle, just like you said, if you're on the road a lot, well, then we would pick uh-huh. out places that are fast food that you can eat and that are here's some right. good choices to make. And that's how we kind of do it. And, and that accountability, I believe, is absolutely paramount. And, uh, and, and But I, I'm telling you, you can't out-train a poor diet. You can't out-run yeah. it. So it's yeah. going to be – the nutrition is going to be the uh, factor that's the, the, the downside. Yeah. I'm right there with Jamie on this. Um, I take mine a little bit one step further with women. I, I actually ask them emotionally, mm-hmm. what was their day like? How were they feeling? Did they stress eat? What went on to basically cause them maybe to overeat? Mm -hmm. Uh, So I I want them to write down exactly what they were feeling at that point. Um, Because that also, your emotions take, people eat because they're in love. They're, or they're sad or, so let's figure out what went on that day for you as well. Just like Jamie, what he does is I send out a questionnaire. I make my clients write down what they ate for two weeks. I want to see, and then we begin the journey because I want to know what, what is their, their mental, emotional, physical process mm-hmm. as they're, they're starting this journey. Makes sense. Yeah, Jamie, yeah. We're right on with what we do together. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and Josh, by the way, you know, of course, uh, nutrition is, is yeah. the paramount, but when you put on lean muscle tissue and Carol just mm-hmm. said it earlier, uh, you know, it covers up a lot of nutritional sins, by the way, yes. because you're constantly burning and churning. Like she was saying, mm-hmm. that that metabolic aspect of muscle tissue, I mean, you're burning and churning three to four times more than if you had a pound of fat. So, mm-hmm. you know, the idea is if you put all these things together, just, just did a little bit, you're going to see some things happen. And therefore, once that light bulb goes off and says, you know what, I'm looking in the mirror going, you know what, I kind of like what I see. I'm I get a, a thumb I can fit in my pants now. Yeah. Now Ooh, maybe I won't like have it. that extra yeah. piece of chocolate cake. Now mm. it's it's the it's starting to, to to transform mentally, physically, mm. and that's and that's where you got to be. And, and just those little daily victories they'll yeah. add up. And mm-hmm. you just want to keep habits going. Boom, boom, boom. It's their and motivation. Yeah. It is I, it's literally their motivation when they realize they're like, oh my god, I put on a pair of pants that I haven't fit in in the last two years. Hmm. And then that motivates them even more so. Yeah. That, I wanna, that's what makes it go. That's I want to get out of pants with an elastic band. <laughs> well, no, I gotta you're going to do well. You're going to do well, Josh. I, I think you got, you got muscle tissue. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, I, yep. I, got, I got some. I got some work to do. Um, well, and, and you know, you guys, you guys said, Hey, how long, how long is this going to be? And I told you, you know, we could go as long as we need to it was up to an hour. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, we are. got lot, we got lots to talk about and it's been an hour. It's flown uh, by wow. Adam That's is telling great. me the minutes. Yeah. You guys, you guys, I mean, just your energy, just you this flew right by. I have to say, uh, first and foremost, thank you to both of you uh, for the work that you do because, uh, helping people live longer lives, healthier lives. Um, is so important. And, uh, you know, as, as right now, I think, I also think that this period of time, I'm sure you guys are dealing with it. Lots of people around you, their par- your parents, people's mm-hmm. parents, people that are your age, you're seeing them pass away a lot mm-hmm. more frequently than just 10 years ago, right? Mm-hmm. And and so if you can help that and and get people healthier to do these things, I think it's great. So your uh, your mission is right. And uh, there's nothing better than, than trying to help get people uh, on the right track. So congratulations on that. Thank you for joining thank me. And you thank you. Thank you, Carol. Like you said, you came up, I was selling t-shirts. I was 
I was dripping. I think yeah. I was sweating. I'm like, I gotta talk to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that was great. No, I, I actually yeah. just was talking to the the folks in Ohio. I'm, I'm going there uh, in August. I've got three bookings already for nice, school. nice, and I love it. Be yeah. awesome. That's yeah. you know, it's all about positivity. Yeah, I, I'm absolutely. About the energy and sharing it with everybody and share the love. I always tell well, people to share the love. We'll get you guys some be awesome stuff uh, sent yeah. out here afterwards. But how do people get a hold of you? How do they? You know, are there any exciting events or programs or anything that's coming up that you want to share with people. And we'll put I, them I did send notes. you, uh, Joshua, if you want yep. to share with your listeners, um, all of our programs, Jamie and our programs, yep. um, for me, you can reach me at www.totalwellness.coach and reach yep. out to me. I will be happy to work one-on-one. -on -one. And like I said, we have those programs that you could share with your listeners. Okay. Um, that is my goal is if I can help one person, uh, then you know what? I made a difference. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. Take, take heed of that. She's great. Yeah. And how about, so, and how about you, Jamie? What? Yeah, Josh, it's really, uh, for me, it's eight minute body.com. And you can just get in touch with me. Yep. If you have questions, we usually mm -hmm. answer within 24 hours or so. And, uh, I just leave it with these thoughts, guys. We want to go from old to bold out there, those boomers, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, learn it, live it, lose it. You're going to love it. So yep. take take control of your uh, your health. Today is your tomorrow, yeah. right? It's up to you yeah. to, to shape it. And, you know, take control of every seize, every opportunity you can. The powers and the choices you make every day. If you eat well, you live well, you shape you. So, Josh, you're going to do great, too. Yeah. Now you got your yeah. hand as your portion control guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's be vibrant, people, not yeah. vintage. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, All right, guys. Thank you is, so much for having thank us. You. Adam, thank, thank you for making us sound good. Yes. <laughs> Adam, thank you. Yes, that's that's I always end with Adam. Thanks and ECAT. Uh, that'll do it for this episode. That these right. episodes come together by just having engagement with great people, and then it just spirals and snow snowballs and get more great people to come on the podcast. And Mark, I miss you. I'm looking over at his chair. He's empty. Uh, he's not here. <laughs> we so miss you too. Yeah, he'll he'll be back for episode 121 because especially if it's uh, they, Dave Hansen because he's a big fan and a uh, former hockey player. So. That'll do it for another episode here. As always, five-star rating and reviews, they go a real long way for us. We're in the top 2.5% of all podcasts, which is 3.7 million, I think. So wow. We're, we Congratulations. Wanna, yes, That's thank great. you. We want to get down to the top 2%, top 1%, mm -hmm. not because of uh, anything other than we want to spread the good word of all of our great yeah. guests, our awesome guests. And uh, so if you can do that for us, that's great. If not, send me an email, Josh. It'd be awesome. Tell me what I can do better to uh, to get to get better and to make the podcast better. So um, as uh, the new saying goes, you are awesome. Have a great day, everybody. Come to you from underneath the peach blossom. It's time for an episode of Be Awesome. Find positivity throughout your life and work Just like our mascot rooster, see the jerk